Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to episode 11 of Show and Tell, where it's all about you. Okay, so first things first, a little bit of housekeeping as usual. I have a little bit over 1,900 subscribers right now. Thank you so much to everybody. I truly appreciate you subscribing and watching the videos and participating with the community. I think we're building something really special here. As many of you know, I have a 2,000 subscriber giveaway of 110 skeins of yarn. So if you know anybody who would enjoy this channel who hasn't subscribed yet, let them know, let them know about the giveaway. If you haven't entered the giveaway yet and you wanna see the yarn, I'll put the link to the video here. Check out the yarn and enter the giveaway. The giveaway should be happening soon. I am hoping to get that box out of here so that I can get ready for the next giveaway, which I'm going to do as part of my birthday. I'm gonna give away a birthday bunch of yarn. Also, fall is upon us and you know I love fall. And I've been working on designing an afghan or blanket in fall colors. I'll show you what I have right now and then I'll tell you my ideas about it. So I just started playing with different stitches and colors and you can see this reminds me kind of like candy corn. I would need the white and maybe a dark brown for the chocolate tip. Can't forget the chocolate. I was playing with different stitches like many sampler blankets that you've seen. And I thought there are so many sampler blankets that are done in stripes or in individual squares that you put together, but I'd like to make this a little bit different. So the first thing I thought was, let me use stitches that you would like to see and you would like to learn. So if there's any stitch you'd like to learn that you'd like to be part of this blanket, send me that stitch and I'll try to work it in. Also, I thought I could start with a square in the center and then work around it in the different stitches. And maybe even in some places, I'd go three sides around with one stitch and start my next stitch and go up so I can play with the design and make it something different. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them because I want this to be a community project. I figure I will start with the center square and put that video up for us to start with that and then for each new stitch and each new piece, I'll put a different video up so we can do it together step by step. Let me know what you think of that idea. I thought it would be a lot of fun. I'm in the process of using the crochet hooks from the least expensive set that I bought in that crochet hook haul. If you haven't seen the haul, I'll put the link here. I think that set cost me $7 and change and it might be on sale now for nine dollars and change so it's not an expensive set of hooks i will have the review on how that set is working out for me very shortly for anybody who was interested in ordering the furls hook i just got an email from them saying that today is the last day for their 20 percent off sale so you may want to go check that out i'll put a link in the description below so that you can go see if there's anything that you'd like i believe the sale is a site-wide sale also, I've been asked by several people for my mailing address, so I've updated my contact information in the description below the videos to include my mailing address. Okay, so we have a lot of great projects today. Let's get started and let's take a look at them. Okay, so the first submission for today is from Dawn Nutter. This is absolutely adorable. Take a look at this. She said, hello, Franny, I have about 20 whips, but managed to finish a fall sweater this week and took the scraps and made one for my dog, Levi. How cute is he in that sweater? Oh my goodness. It's completely normal to make your dog a matching sweater, right? I see nothing wrong with that. I used Ferris wheel yarn in the color Buttercup. No real pattern, just a normal top down. Levi is 14 years old and is mostly blind and deaf, but still has his puppy personality. I absolutely love the sweater, the colors, and oh, that dog is so adorable. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending that in, Dawn, and starting us off with just a big smile. The next submission is from one of our regulars, Lisa Mayen. Take a look at this beautiful shawl. 
She said, I always forget to send pictures until I see the latest episode, but yet I know to look for it every week, LOL. This is my latest project, Unforgettable Lunar Crossing Shawl, patterned by Kim Guzman. I used four skeins of Red Heart Unforgettable yarn in the colorway Rainforest at 270 yards per skein or 246 meters, and it's a four medium weight yarn with a six millimeter hook. Absolutely beautiful. I love Unforgettable yarn. Their colorways are so pretty, and this is no exception. Lisa also sent these pictures of another batch of crocheted hot water felted bags. Wow, I really love the look of these and the detail, the trim that matches the handle, the button. And here we have a different button, the same yarns, but a different shape. I really like that. Oh, and look at this purple one. I like the detail on the handle and the trim again and that butterfly. And then this last bag looks like it's a large bag that you could really use it for a weekend or bag. All of these projects look so great. Thank you so much for sending them in, Lisa. Our next submissions come from Sharon Densmore, who is in the Christmas spirit already, getting ready for Christmas. Take a look at these pictures. First, she said, this is the poncho I made my granddaughter for Christmas. I used Red Heart Comfort Yarn for this. The pattern is from Crystal at Bag of Day. She is a very good teacher. Her tutorials are so easy to follow. I have made it quite a few of her patterns. That is so true. Crystal is a great teacher. I love the pom-poms and the fringes. This looks really great. And I really should have paid attention to your wording that this was for your granddaughter because the next picture, look at this adorable sweater. This sweater is so cute with the buttons and the stitch pattern and the collar folded over. I just love it. She said, I'm just going to town on these Christmas presents. Beside a new baby on the way, I have been crocheting every day. This cute little sweater is done with Craft Smart yarn from Michaels and the pattern is from Simona Crochet. She has so many cute tutorials for little kids. She is very easy to follow. So I'll have to check her out. But the funny part about this is, I sent her back an email saying, you have a new baby on the way, congratulations. And she sent back an email laughing saying, that would make the Guinness Book of World Records because she's a grandmother. So that was really funny. Thank you so much, Sharon, for sending those pictures in. These next submissions are from Simone Maffey, another regular. Take a look. She said, hello, Francine. I'm a sucker for rainbow color yarn and I love cake yarn. So this was an absolute had to have. My daughter took claim to these well before they were finished. I will be seeking out this yarn again to make a pair for myself. I love the colors and they look so cozy and comfy. And there's a little bit of sparkle in there, it looks like. This next picture, she said, I didn't make these. I was gifted a purple one and loved it so much. I ordered these three to gift to a few yarnaholic friends. A local lady makes them and I think they are adorable, so I just had to share them. These are so adorable. I love the details, the lining, how the button matches the yarn. Really well done. Thank you so much for sending those in, Simone. These next pictures come from Shalene Wilson. Take a look. Shalene said, I'm attaching pictures of my first crochet project. It began as a bag a day tutorial. Let's just say I learned, she put that in quotes, from this project. It also got me excited about making summer hats with the kitchen cotton. I have hats bought in Guatemala and in Mexico made from the same type of yarn and I've worn them for 20 years. The ice cotton air is great for hats as well because it's chain spun. It breathes better than the plied cotton. I could see that. She said she likes making hats because she can experiment with combinations of stitches without committing to something large. That's really a great idea to make small projects when you're doing your experimenting because at least you'll get a finished project out of it and it won't take you too long. She said she's also attaching a picture of her kite string lace which now decorates her lace making bolster. She thought I might like to see how the yarn looks when making lace. Wow, that looks great. I've never made lace. I'm definitely gonna have to try it, especially with all those spools I just got from Ice Yarns. Thank you so much for sending those pictures in and way to go on your first project, Shalene. 
I love how you made it your own and the flower on it really looks great. These next pictures come from Misty Dawn, another regular, take a look. She said, I've been busy designing kitchen and bath items for fall and Christmas. The two pattern and color schemes for fall are Falling in Love with Maple and Autumn Coast. Love those names. In pictures one through three, I designed a two-tone pot holder with maple leaf appliques in colors burnt orange slash pumpkin, cranberry, and lightly variegated cotton in pumpkin slash mustard slash blue. Cloths come in both small size eight by eight and large size 12 by 12. In pictures four and five is the Falling in Love with Maple Coaster set. This took me several tries to enlarge the leaf to fit the bottom of a cup or glass while not making it too large. Orange, cranberry, yellow, and variegated. Thank you for sharing that, Misty, that it took you several tries to get the leaf just the right size because that is what happens during the design process. In pictures five and six, she says, the next design and colorway is Autumn Coast. Picture here are the eight by eight cloths. These are awesome. So nice, so pretty. In picture seven, she has the Autumn Coast pot holder and coaster set. She said, this one was highly admired by the guys. Some will be simple triangles, while others will have scalloped borders. That's great. And finally, tightly crocheted and stuffed pumpkins to match. She said, I hope you all enjoy and that she's been very inspired by this series and the talent and support in this community. I have too. And for anybody interested in Misty's work and her patterns, I will have her Instagram address in the description below. Thank you so much for sending those in, Misty. I am so ready for fall. Okay, so that was this week's submissions. If you'd like to participate, please send your pictures and descriptions to my email address frannysquare at gmail.com. If you sent me pictures and you didn't see them in this episode, I probably received them after I put the video together and they will be in next week's episode. I've gotten so many comments from all of you about how much you love this series. So let's keep it going. Keep sending your pictures in. And if you design your own stuff and you write patterns and you sell your patterns or you share your patterns, let me know where people can find those patterns so I can point them in the right direction if they'd like to make your projects. Okay, as always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own, and I'll see you soon.